different fist bumps you can give. You can give a snail fist bump. You can give a regular fist bump. You can give a jellyfish fist bump. You can give an exploding fist bump. There are lots of different options. Oh, and if you want to do the turkey too. That one's really more of a high five, but still, you can do the turkey. Okay. All right, so give a friend a fist bump. joining us for our online Kids Week. So that's why Mr. Sam was helping me out. And this week, we thought it would be kind of fun if we did a little mixture. So it's not going to be all Miss Christina, and it's not going to be all Mr. Sam. It's going to be a little bit of both. So I'm going to be doing the music, and I'm going to be showing you guys the plants that's in my office and at my house. And Mr. Sam is going to be helping us with Bible time and with offering and prayer and craft. So it's going to be really fun. We're going to get to do a little bit of both today. All right, well, let's go talk to Jimmy. Um, we've been learning about the Lord's Prayer from Jimmy for a while, and I think this might be the last week of doing the Lord's Prayer. So that's really cool. We've been going through all the different parts of the Lord's Prayer and what they mean, and it's been really awesome. So let's check in with Jimmy, and let's hear about the Lord's Prayer. Hello there, Children's Church. How are you today? Well, I'm here today wearing a special kind of hat called a deerstalker cap. So this kind of hat was pretty popular a long time ago in Scotland and England, but it's most famous now because it's worn by the most famous detective from books and movies and TV, Sherlock Holmes. Mm. <clears throat> so my mom read me one of the one of the stories about Sherlock Holmes this week, and it was really neat how he solved the mystery. And that gave me an idea to, to tell you some jokes today about detectives. Ready? <clears throat> Who is the world's most famous cat detective? Well, it's Perlock Holmes. Why are ducks really good detectives? They always quack the case. So sometimes when a detective is working on a mystery, it's called the case that he's working on. And, and when he solves it, uh, they say that he cracked the case. So get it? It sounds like crack the case when I say quack the case. <laughs> oh, why is it hard to be a detective at the North Pole? Because everything is a cold case. 
So when a mystery isn't solved for a really long time because it's really hard, it's called a cold case. And it's always cold as the nor at the North Pole, so cold case. <laughs> Why did the detective visit the aquarium? Because there was something fishy going on. Oh, and one more. What would you call an alligator who solves mysteries? You'd call him an investigator. Get it? Gator? Like he's an investigator who investigates, but he's a gator because he's an alligator? Ha. Huh. Did, did you like the jokes? I really enjoyed coming up with them. So I hope you thought they were funny. Even if, even if you did some detective work and, and figured out some of the punchlines before I even said them. <laughs> now, are you ready to get back to the Lord's Prayer? Today, we'll be talking about the very last part of it. So I'd like to tell you that part first, then we'll finish up by saying the whole prayer together. Ready? Our new part for this week is, For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, this last part of the Lord's Prayer sort of sums up the whole thing, and it reminds us of where, where it started, with God's glory. We remind ourselves in this part of the prayer that, that it's God's kingdom we're praying for. We're praying that the kingdom which God made, and where he's the king, would, would grow. We also remind ourselves that it's God who has the power to do all this. That's one reason why we're praying to him, because we depend on him. Then we remind ourselves that all the glory belongs to God. It's, it's so kind of like Mr. Sam was telling us in the Bible story last week. Our special job in God's kingdom is to tell other people about Jesus, so everyone in the world can know how wonderful God is. Then, the very last word in the prayer is Amen. We, we say that an awful lot, so it's easy to forget what it means, but it literally means, so be it. So it's kind of like we finish by saying in one word, Yes, God, we really want all these things. And that's the Lord's Prayer. Now, are you ready to say it all together? Repeat after me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our coming day's bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into trial, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Great job, everybody! That was awesome! I'm so glad that Jesus taught us the right way to pray. There are so many things which are really confusing, but it's wonderful how much we can learn from listening to Jesus. And now I think it's time for our Bible story. So, goodbye, everybody! Have a great week! Hello everybody! It is great to see you again. Did you have fun with Jimmy? Those were some pretty funny jokes he told, weren't they? And did you see that hat he was wearing? Wow, that was a silly hat. A deer stalker? I don't think I've ever seen someone wearing a hat like that, like in church or out on the street. That was quite something. 
Anyway, are you guys ready to hear our new story for today? This week, we are learning a parable called The Parable of the Two Sons. This is a parable that Jesus taught while he was in Jerusalem and while he was talking with some Pharisees. So we learned uh, who the Pharisees were a little while ago. Jimmy told us more about that word. But in case you don't remember, the Pharisees were some of the teachers of Israel. And they wanted to have everyone follow every little bit of God's law. And they spent a lot of time arguing with Jesus. And one of the things they especially argued with him about is that he seemed to spend a lot of time with people who didn't seem like very good people. With people who didn't really do what God wanted them to do. So keep that in mind as we learn today's new story, The Parable of the Two Sons. Here is a man. He grows apples in an orchard. The apples are red and rosy, and it's time for them to be picked. Wow, they, those look delicious, don't they? Oh, it looks like one of them hit the guy on the head. I bet that hurt. At home, the man has two sons. I want you to help me pick the apples, says the man to his first son. No, says the first son, I'm busy. Do you guys think that's the right way to, to respond when one of your parents asks you to do something? I hope you all said no, because that is not the right way to respond when your parents ask you to do something. It's not good at all. But, after a little while, he is sorry for what he said. He picks up a basket and goes to the orchard. Oh, so I guess the first son realized that he didn't respond the right way. So that's good. The man finds his second son. I want you to help me pick the apples too, he says. Yes, says the second son. I will come as soon as I have put on my boots. Hey, that is a much better answer than the first son gave. Back in the orchard, the first son is busy picking apples. Look, he has already filled one basket. Oh, he's doing a good job. Well done, son, says the man. Here is another basket. We'll have this done in no time. They work together until all the apples have been picked, but there is no sign of the second son. He has forgotten his promise. That's right, the second son said he was going to come help, but I don't, I don't see him anywhere. Who do you think pleases his father? The first son or the second son? So that's a really interesting story because the two sons one of him answered his father the right way and said, yes, I will come help you. And the other son answered his father the wrong way and said, no, I will not come help you. But 
the son who said, no, I won't come help you, did actually help his father. And the son who said that, yes, he would help his father, didn't actually help his father. So who do you think pleased his father more? Well, the Pharisees, when Jesus asked them that question, they said, the first son, the one who said no, he wouldn't help, but then he did help, that was the son who pleased his father more. And guess what? The Pharisees were right. The son who did help, even though he said that he wouldn't, definitely pleased his father more because he actually did what his father really wanted him to do. But the Pharisees, they said the right answer, but in that parable, the other son is actually the one who represented the Pharisees. You see, the Pharisees, they wanted everybody to see and to hear how they were following God's law, but they didn't really understand God's law right, and they didn't really love God in their hearts. But meanwhile, the other people who Jesus was talking to, the people who everyone thought were bad people, even though they had done things against God's law, they really loved God in their hearts, and they were trying to obey God better. So the Pharisees are like the, the son who said, yes, I will help, but then he actually didn't. Whereas the tax collectors and the other people Jesus was spending time with, they were like the son who said, no, I won't help, but then he did actually help. So there's another example of this kind of thing, which Jesus actually used one chapter later in the book of Matthew. So, one of the rules that the Pharisees loved to tell everybody about and tell everyone how great a job they were doing at following it is that whenever they were going to eat or drink, they didn't just clean the part of the cup or the plate that they were actually going to eat off of. They actually cleaned the entire thing really well because they thought that the, they thought that God's law says it should be really clean. But they didn't understand that when God's law talks about how he wants us to be clean and the things we're using to be clean, what it's really teaching us is that our hearts should be clean. So, what Jesus said is this. Jesus said, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee first clean the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside also will be clean. So, I actually have a cup here and tell me guys, does this look clean to you? I hope you just said no, because this, this looks really nasty and it would be a very bad idea to drink out of it. However, so I have a paper towel here. What were to happen if I were to do a really careful good job of wiping down the outside of this glass to make sure that there's nothing at all that's dirty on the outside of this glass. Hmm, get up here and on the bottom. Do a really good job wiping it. Okay, do you think the glass is clean now? No, it's not. It's still really dirty. It's dirty on the inside, but it would still be a terrible idea to drink out of it. So what does this mean? It means that if all we're concerned about is 
making ourselves look like we're following God's law and making ourselves look to other people like we love God when on the inside we don't really love God, then that's a real problem. That's, that's what Jesus said the Pharisees were like. Instead, we need, to be, we need to be concerned for what's in our hearts. Remember, Jesus said that the greatest commandment was, love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And all of the rest of the law is just in those commandments. So, what have we learned? We've learned that what's most important isn't for the outside of us to be clean. That means it's not that important uh, that other people look at us and think that we're really good, or it's not really important for us to say all of the right things when we don't mean them, like the brother in the story. What's really important is what's in our hearts, that we love God, with all our hearts, because that's what he's most concerned about. All right, so that is the end of our story for today. And now I think it is time for offering. So even though Miss Christina's guitar is here, I'm still going to use mine for our song Sanctuary, just because Miss Christina's guitar is a, a little smaller than mine and I have really big hands, so they kind of hurt if I try to play Miss Christina's guitar. All right then, so now it is time for you each to get your offering baskets. Remember, it doesn't have to be a basket that looks quite like this. Uh, it could be anything that you can hold and you can put your hand in. It could be a bowl, or a plate, or a cup, or an upside down hat. It could be a lot of different things. So go ahead and get your offering baskets, and we're go I'm going to put on a music video while you do that. And we'll be right back. To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in praise And I want to be faithful I want to be faithful I want to remember everything That the Lord has done I want to be thankful I want to be grateful I want to be, I want to be, I want to be I like to think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands and say
everybody have a basket? So remember, during offering, what you can do is take your hand and gently touch the bottom of the offering basket. And when you do that, you can say, Jesus, today I'm giving you my heart. And that is a wonderful way to tell Jesus that you love him. And now we are going to sing our song, Sanctuary. Remember, Mr. Sam is not very good at playing the guitar, so uh, try to humor me and uh, make sure that you sing along, because I'm sure you're much better singers than I am. Okay, here we go. back up here to the fifth floor where we visit the craft room to see what Amanda has for us to do. So let's go inside and see if we can find Amanda. Hmm. Hang on a minute. Wait. Do you see Amanda anywhere in here, guys? Amanda? Guys, I, I don't see Amanda. Do you think she's not here this week again? No, wait a minute. You remember last week when Amanda wasn't able to be here with us, she left us a letter saying where she was. And in the past, usually if she's not able to come to Children's Church, she leaves us a note saying where she is. But I don't see any letter from Amanda here today. So maybe she is here, but she's taking a nap or something. I'll tell you what, let's try doing our countdown to wake Amanda up. So if she is in the room, she'll wake up and, and do a craft with us. Okay? So let's count down from three. Make sure that you count along with me though, because I don't think it'll work unless we're all doing the countdown and then we all say, come, uh, come out Amanda. Okay? Let's try this. Three, two, one, come out, Amanda! Oh, hi, hi Mr. Sam. Guys, Amanda is here. Amanda, where were you? I was uh, worried we weren't going to have you with us here today. Yeah, I, I was taking a little nap. Okay, were, were you tired from working on your Kids Week costume? Oh, I was so tired, Mr. Sam. I've been working on that Kids Week costume for weeks now. 
Wow. Well, I really am looking forward to seeing it. I bet it's pretty cool. Thanks. Hey, speaking of working on stuff, would, would you want to do a craft with me? Oh, I, I don't know. I'm not very good at doing a craft. Do you what? think I can? What are you talking about, Mr. Sam? Your craft last week was so cool. Oh, oh I, I was just following your instructions, but... Uh, oh, okay. I, I guess I'll do a craft with you. Are we going to use this stuff here? Yeah, so, so here's what I was thinking. Um, this is the last week that Jimmy covered the Lord's Prayer, so maybe we can make a special prayer book using our hands. That sounds really cool. Okay, let me get the camera from over there and bring it here so the kids can see the, us doing the craft better. Okay, that sounds great. All right, Amanda. So I see we've got some markers and some crayons and some paper, but how are we making this prayer book? Well, so, so this is what you have to do. First, you have to pick which color paper you want to use. Hmm. Sometimes I like to pick a, a colored piece of paper, but, um, but other times I like to pick white if I want to do lots of pictures and drawings on it. Yeah, that sounds good. I think I'll use the white one, then we can do lots of coloring on it, and, you know, you like to put stickers on stuff, too. We oh, can do all I, I love stuff stickers! Like Okay, so I'm going to use this piece of paper right here. Uh -huh. Um, So first, you need to fold it in half. Okay. Uh, well, which way? Like this or like this? Uh, the, 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 the second way. Th this way? Yeah. All right. And fold that over. Boom. Fold it in half. Oh, okay. Perfect. So now you need to lay down your hand on the paper, and, and we're gonna trace it, but but here's the thing, Mr. Sam, you have to make sure you lay it down on the correct side. So, you, you see your pinky? Yeah. Yeah, so you have to take your pinky, and it needs to be touching the side where there's the fold in the paper. Can oh, you find okay. the fold in the paper? Yeah, so the the fold in the paper is Oh, oh yeah, 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 that, that, that's so great. So my, my pinky is gonna be on that side. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, that, that looks perfect. Okay, um, now you need to trace it. So uh, pick, pick a color marker, trace it, and, and then we're going to cut it out after you trace it. I'm going to pick blue. Ooh, I that's, like that's blue. a good choice. All right. Uh, wait, how close to the fold should my hand be? Um, so, so basically what we're doing today is we're making kind of like a book. So it's going to need to open. So I think you actually should put your pinky almost all the way up next to the edge because right. we want a really good, nice, long place where it can fold. Okay, so there we go. Yeah. So then yeah, I'll yeah. start tracing over here. Okay? Am I good to go? Yep. How does that? Oh, that looks great, Mr. Sam. Thank you. Okay, so um, so now you need to cut it out. Do you? you oh, I see them. The, the, the scissors are right there. Yep. Okay. So I'm tra So I'm cutting along that line. Ooh, look, I got marker on my hand because I was tracing it. That's oh, okay. Be, be careful doing that, guys. Yeah. Thankfully, I only use washable markers so that we can wash it out. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It would be sad if my hand was blue forever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what should I do for this part where I wasn't able to trace? Um, you, you can you can just cut straight along the bottom. Okay. All right. Let's see. Perfect. So how does that look, Amanda? Oh, that, that's perfect, Mr. Sam. Oh, and I see. So it opens up. So right now it's kind of like there are two hands that are together praying, and then it opens up. Yep, that's exactly it. Great that's, job. Thank you. So well, what are we supposed to do now? Are we just going to color it? I see we have markers and some crayons. Yeah, we also have some stickers um over, over there. Do you see them on the table? Oh, boy. That's... Wow, I could put shark stickers on my hands. You could put sharks, you could wow. put flowers, butterflies, bubbles, fish. We have so many different kinds of stickers. Okay, so so, so do we just decorate now, or, or is there something else that's supposed to happen? Well, so on my prayer book, I like to write my prayer book. 
right on the very front. But I know that not everybody is able to write with their letters yet, so mm -hmm. you could also draw a picture of somebody praying. Oh, that's neat. Or I, I bet I, I could also, you could also have your parents or your o older siblings help. Oh, that's a great idea, Mr. Sam. Nice. And d does anything special go on the inside? Well, what you can do is because we've been talking about the Lord's Prayer, you could write the Lord's Prayer on the inside. Wow, that's an awesome idea. It's been so fun learning that with Jimmy, so it, it'll be great to have it written down here in the prayer book. Wow, this is a great craft, Amanda. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Sam. Okay, guys, I, I think I'm going to stop my craft right here instead of spending a lot of time decorating it. But you guys should definitely spend more time coloring yours and using stickers and anything else you want to use to decorate it. And then you can send pictures of it to Miss Christina. I bet she'll love to see them. Yeah, and whenever you send pictures of Miss Christina, she shares them with me. That's right. Amanda wants to see pictures of your craft. That is an awesome craft, Amanda. Yeah, it, it was so much fun doing it with you, Mr. Sam. Oh, thank you. I, I was really happy to help. It's fun doing crafts with you. All right, guys, I think it is time for us to go back downstairs for some more music. Yay. So let's, let's everyone say bye to Amanda. Bye, guys. All right, I'll see you back downstairs. Making your own prayer booklet for the Lord's Prayer, I thought that was awesome. And that was really cool that Mr. Sam and Amanda got to hang out and do it together. I thought that was great. So, I was thinking, last week when Jimmy had his hat on and he did his jokes, he was talking about Christmas time. Wasn't that so funny? It was only July. But that got me thinking, what if we were to do one of the Christmas songs that I was teaching you guys last Christmas? So what I wanted to do is I wanted to sing the song, Angels We Have Heard on High, that we were kind of working on last year. So if you guys remember the words and maybe even some of the actions, you can join along with me. Cool? Also, it's been so, so, so long since I tried to play this on the guitar, so I'm probably going to be looking at my notes here a lot because remember, these notes tell me what chords to play on the guitar. So I'm probably going to be looking at my music here a lot, but don't worry, we're still going to have lots of fun, okay?
Gloria part and we would go Gloria, Gloria, Gloria in the highest. Do you remember doing that? It was so long ago. Christmas was so long ago, wasn't it? And pretty soon, once we get through the fall and start winter, a new Christmas is going to be here. Isn't that crazy to think about? All right, well, that was fun to do with you guys. Thanks for that. Okay, so let's do I've Got the Joy, 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 Joy down in my heart. I've got the joy. are really easy and I'm sure even if you guys didn't tune in two weeks ago it'll be really easy for you to catch on and sing along with us. Yeah. 
love so much. Okay, well, let's go upstairs to my office and let's check in on the strawberry plants. See you up there. Hello, friends. So we are back up at my office. Let's take a look at these strawberry plants. So here they are, and wow, is it a sunny day outside. I don't know if I've ever shown you guys. This is the view from my office window. So I can look down and I can see the Boston Common and I can see the Prudential Tower there in the distance. It's really cool. And I forget, can I see the sit go sign? Oh yeah, 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 I can. Okay, it's really far there. Do you see it? Do you see it right? Can I get my finger in the camera here? Uh, I don't know how to get my finger in the camera over there. Oh, there it is. Set go sign is boop, boop, right there. You see that orange triangle? <laughs> so I can see a whole lot of stuff from my office and wow, it looks like a sunny day with nice clouds out. Well, anyways, my strawberry plant here, it is still looking like a jungle. So I was telling you guys about doing Kids Week and I have been so, so busy. So I haven't had the time yet to put all these other little guys inside of their own pots, but clearly I need to do it because my poor friend, the lobster over here is inside of a strawberry plant jungle right now. <laughs> wow. So the plant is doing really good. You'll notice there's lots of these brown leaves. So those are old leaves. Um, that are no longer um, soaking up the sunshine for the plant to grow. So I need to just cut them off. That's typically what we do when we see something like this. We'll just cut it off right down there. Um, so just so the plant has only the leaves that it needs and we can get rid of the old ones. So that's how the plant is doing. All right, well, let's head on over to my house and we can take a look at Amanda's tomato plant and the watermelon and the cantaloupe. And I think I'm even gonna show you guys the popcorn today. All right, see you there. Hello everyone. So I'm back at home and I wanted to give you guys an update on Amanda's tomato plant and on the watermelon, the cantaloupe and the popcorn plants. Here is Amanda's tomato plant. It is doing super, super well. I think the special fertilizer that I gave it with all the nutrients in it made it a whole lot better because you can see the leaves aren't purple anymore. So that's awesome. So look at it. It has so many leaves. It's growing taller and taller and taller and taller. And see all these baby leaves? These baby leaves are going to keep growing and getting bigger and bigger just like these. And it's just going to keep getting bigger and hopefully at some point we will get some tomatoes. Here are the watermelon and the cantaloupe plants. And as you can see, they have grown so much in these past couple of weeks. And look at this one right here. It has grown, woo, and guess what? This is all part of it. Let me get around to the side so you can see it. Look at that. It's so big and it has these little kind of vine tendril things that come off of it and they'll wrap themselves around things. So if you guys remember, I was talking about how last week or two weeks ago um, that the cats had tried to get into this box and they had actually sat on a couple of plants. And so that's what this netting is for. This netting is here to stop the cats from getting in. So, um, so that'll keep the plants growing nice, big and strong. Um, so again, that's watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. This one's cantaloupe, and that's cantaloupe. And I think these two plants and these three plants here aren't doing so great. It might be because of the cats. I'm not really sure. So um, we might be pulling those ones up just to give all the other ones enough room to grow really, really big and to make some awesome watermelon and cantaloupe fruit. So I haven't been talking much about the popcorn plants, um, I've, um, but they've been growing here and we will see if they uh, get big enough to make anything. Because remember, I kind of put these guys outside a little bit late in the summer, um, the popcorn and the cantaloupe and the watermelon um, and the tomato actually. So it's kind of, um, we'll just see um, what happens to them, but they're doing really well right now. They're growing really well. So I'm excited to see what happens. All right, friends. Well, that wraps it up for Children's Church today. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope you have a good week. See you next time.